Hello, my name is Alicia Ullerman, and I'm the Planning Specialist in the Community MT Division of the Department of Commerce. Today, I'll be walking you through the new online MSEP application. First off, I wanted to note that there's technically no deadline for this application. We will start reviews once we receive a batch big enough to review, and we will continue this pattern through the next biennium or the next two years. All right, let's get started. So first off, you'll want to go to this website, montana.servicenowservices.com forward slash MTGL. You'll click on the Montana Coal Endowment Program for planning. And I'll take you to the first page here with some information about the program, eligible projects and eligible applicants. If you click over to this tab, application forms, you can find the signature page that we require in the application and then also the guidelines. Now I'll click the apply button. And this takes you to the main application. You'll want to enter in all the required information. Here is where you will attach that required signature page. And then enter in the main information of the application. Once we get down here to the contact information summary, there are six fields here for different contacts. We would uh, prefer if you could at least provide us two so that we are able to contact you. And so the primary ones would be the chief elected official or authorized representative. And then for the second one, anything in the second column here. So the primary contact, grant administrator, and clerk. If you can fill out all six, that would be preferable. Then we'll go down here to the application. Here's the type of grant you are applying for. Those are the options. And then you'll need to check um, one of these boxes if your application is to primarily meet um, growth or fire flow. And that is an ARPA re regulation. And we have to have that due to this funding being backfilled by ARPA money. Now on to the proposed budget. Here's where you will enter again the amount that you are requesting from us. And then you will enter your match amount, which needs to be 20% of the budget total. So if you have a $50,000 project, that would be $10,000. If you have other funding sources, such as RRGL, please enter those in these uh, funding source one or funding source two. For the budget narrative, please note that we have these question marks located throughout the application as well. Those provide more information. So please click on those. Here are the instructions to fill out the budget narrative. And also please note that applications without a detailed budget narrative will not be funded. If you are applying for a hardship waiver, this is where you can do that. And you will, um, you could either type in the reason that you need the hardship waiver here, or there is a paperclip icon at the very bottom of the application where you can attach um, your justification there. Now onto the project implementation schedule. This is the same schedule we've used in the past for previous applications. Uh, it should look familiar. And this one, we have a drop-down calendar. And I recommend you use either the first or last day of the month. We don't necessarily look at what day of the month you're completing. It's more so the month of the year that we'll be looking at. Proposed planning activity description and history. So if you are applying for a PER, you'll want to complete this first box here. Click the information button. 
and you'll need to provide a description less than 500 words of the project that's being proposed for construction after the preliminary engineering is complete. And here you can upload your project location map or any other documentation. If you're applying for a CIP, you'll want to fill in this box. There's a little additional information there. And also, again, a brief description, less than 500 words of the plan that's being proposed and the types of infrastructure that will be evaluated and planned for. And here is where you can upload your proposed work plan and a proposed table of contents. Going down to the MSEP Infrastructure Planning Grant Award criteria. The first question is for public health and safety. Is the proposed planning activity intended to address an urgent threat to public health and safety or to enable local governments to meet state or federal health and safety standards? If it's a yes, then you'll need, you need to fill out one of these choices here. If you have a violation that came with a letter or if you have a warning letter that you might get a violation letter or if it's a verbal warning and you do not have a letter. And then also, here's the button to upload that violation or letter. If you choose no, you'll just go to question number two. So number two, financial need. This is asking about the target rate. And if you click the question mark, it will take you to the tool that you can find that information. Here's the target rate calculation resource. Just fill in this information and search and it'll bring up all of your current rates. And then you'll need to fill in what uh, you anticipate the rates being when the project is complete. We also provide a box here if you believe that the calculation is incorrect. You can make an argument for that here. Question three is on community change. And again, we have another information box. Um, and here is the tool you can use here to figure out your population. Again, they have some drop down buttons and you can select the location and figure out the population changes from 2010 to 2020 in your area. We also provide another um, optional box here where you can provide extra information, possibly changes resulting from the COVID-19 pandemic, et cetera. Number four is for economic impact. Will the proposed planning activity result in the retention of existing full-time jobs, the creation of full-time jobs, or stimulate some form of economic development that increases the tax base? If any of these apply, please check one. And then you'll have to fill out the box that pops up below, approximately how many. These all have boxes. You can fill out any or all of those. Number five, it's best long-term value. We'll need to provide a brief explanation, less than 500 words of why the proposed planning activity represents the best long-term value for the applicant and residents or users and for the people of Montana. There's additional information here to help you write that. And again, if you need more space than the box allows, then you can attach a document at the paper clip at the bottom of the application. Question six, there are seven options here. And this just goes through the different um, scenarios that you could be in. So the first one, for example, is if you don't have any open MSEP infrastructure planning grants, you haven't been awarded one in the past four years, and you're only applying for one in this round. And then they go through different scenarios here about open planning grants versus how many you're applying for and in what categories. So please pick the scenario that best fits your situation there. Down here, we have a couple of 
required attachments. They're not required for everyone. These are just if you are, for example, a water or sewer district, we will need to see the documentation showing the legal creation. And then the second one here is for letters of support and the letter for the commitment of matching funds. And here is the paper clip I mentioned for any additional attachments. That's the end of the application. So once you're done with that, you'll click submit. And this will take you to a second page. So it looks like this. It gives you a brief summary of your application. Also, it popped up some tabs here. So here you can look at any activity that happens with your application. Here you can add additional attachments. And this is where you can add contributors. If you would like to have more than one person working on your application, you can enter in their email here and send it to them. And then they will be able to access the application as well. So once you review that all of your information is correct, and scroll all the way to the bottom here. And save. And then you are done. All right. Thanks for watching my tutorial. And we look forward to seeing all of your great applications here soon. Thanks. Bye.